Oh I my am God. Dan Harmon, and uh, with me is Allison Brie. Hi, I'm Allison Brie. And Joe Russo. Hi, it's Joe Russo here. Who directed this episode. Uh, and Joel McHale is late. Can I not go back and just comment on Yvette's bosom as she ran in in that opening shot? Because, the, the shot uh, was specifically designed for her bosom. It was the bosom shot. Actually, we the do moment. a lot of shots that are uh, uh, for animated uh, GIF files because we know you're making them. <laughs> they do make plenty of them. I'm a fan of the bosom, but Yvette doesn't always, you know. So this is the uh, this is the <laughs> Jack episode, right? This is sort of a. You know, typical of community. It's like we're making fun of the idea of stunt casting. We're also making fun of the idea of rebooting your series over a correct name. The character of Joel is has over the break decided, oh, I'm too much of an asshole, which is sort of a note we were getting internally. <laughs> um, and yeah, but I love that shot. That, that, that Jack just appears. Jack was just in the background. Yeah, and here comes another great shot of you see Jack. <laughs> it's really funny to me. It's interesting is that on this show we do really embrace concepts like uh, if we're going to alter a character, you really push it to the forefront in a very right. postmodern way. And there was always jokes going around that the way to uh, uh, sort of, you know, make Joel's character more accessible was to Hawkeye him. Right, right. And so we really manifested that in this episode by giving... Uh, a Hawkeye runner yeah. to he and other and, and it's not out of like jaded sarcasm like because nobody wants to watch a show about the writer going fuck you don't give me that note it's like it's an embrace of what's really going on because then way, that way the energy feels more real I don't know, that's always been my philosophy well and like, the character needed a growth arc it's a TV show and it's a, it's a it's a long season and you you have to track something with the character otherwise he sort of falls into a static state and you can get bored with it, and it's, this show is called Community. It's about an organism yeah. that sort of grows and changes. And this is the writer's idea, sort of a. I think I I wasn't in the room, but I, maybe John Pollock came up with it. The idea of of like doing flashbacks and establishing that Jack had been there the whole time. We, yeah, that, that made us laugh a lot. This one on the call sheet was listed as <laughs> the greatest scene that's ever been shot. Talk, talk about a gif, right? <laughs> Indeed yes. it was. I, I, that's my screensaver. The the crew members were giving us uh, dollar bills when we finished <laughs> shooting that scene, and we threatened to kick them out of the room. We were like, look, we let you watch. How behave. many times we do that? <laughs> Not too many. Yeah. No, but people enjoyed watching us hit each other and ooh and ah. I think I felt awkward about doing it more than twice, as if then I would really be. <laughs> well, once know. we were was in the show, we were all wet. We was it really... actual? What was it? What was the substance? Was it, it was bubbles. It was like a ton of bubbles and like foam pad. But it felt really fun to fall into. I think we were a little nervous about it. Once it we did, once we did it, we were like, we could do this all day. Oh, this joke um, I had to fight for really bad. Like. You know, the fact that it breaks up his rhythm with the, oh, with right. the title sequence. Very, very controversial. People, yeah, people get scared of incredibly funny, awesome jokes. But people love that. <laughs> that I loved. I died with that because it is that. I would have quit the show. Some jokes are too funny, man. <laughs> too smart. Jack was so great when he came in. He was so cool with <laughs> everybody. We face, all were really dude. nerdy. Yeah. You know, we have <laughs> good story to tell us that with Jack, we had uh, we had one day with Jack and we had eleven pages with him. Oh so my it was God. A, yeah. it was a crazy day with three cameras and yes. two sets, three sets running back and forth. We had shot all of our react, like half of all of the cast reactions to him the day before, and we were doing the other half oh, of them right. after. I forgot about that. Yeah. So he just had to do everything he was going to do. Yeah, we had to get everything day. where Jack was on camera, either a piece of him or his face directly. And then we saved some reaction shots for the next day, and I think I just sat there with a pair of sides. Yeah, Joe, Joe stood pale. in for Jack, and we couldn't keep a straight face. Yeah. It was so funny. You did a really good <laughs> that's Jack. A really, that's, a, that's, a, that's a sad attempt. Now, this is kind of an odd thing. Jack, Jeff, for one episode, has been rebooted as the <laughs> editor of the school paper. And it, it, this is the danger for writers listening of... TV writers listening of building an episode around a joke. And uh, there's a very funny joke here, the concept that is Jeff sends the kids out for pizza and beer and stuff in our, under the auspices of its first story. It, it, the, the joke stuck, and, and, and everyone kept laughing at it so much and, and kept wanting it and wanting it and wanting it. It was sort of this whole newspaper office was built by the time we were having debates over whether or not this story was working and all this stuff, and it was sort of unceremoniously mashed together. But I, but, but I no pun intended. But I, but I will say this episode as a whole is like a, is, is a real miracle of, of collaboration and stuff because I remember staying up literally all night with Neil Goldman and sort of like trying to figure out how this story, which has on its surface absolutely nothing to do with the idea of a new guy in the study group, 
um, how how is it part of the same theme? And it has, how did it weave into the fabric? Right. Mm-hmm. How is it one episode? And it has something to do with Jeff having decided that he's going to be an easygoing guy. And, you know, and it's a really, really nice episode. I really like it. Yeah, yeah the relationship between uh, Jeff and Abed is really nice in this episode. And it sort of, you know, pushes forward the concept of Abed as this god figure or this, uh, this character who has all this knowledge, uh, even though he is socially inept. That girl whose scene we talked over is, is an actress from Mad Men. Um, <laughs> she also does uh, uh, bikini shoots. You know. And birthday parties. You know. Also, there was a cameo by DC Pearson, who's part of Derek Comedy. That's right. A lot of the Derek Comedy members make cameos in the show. Mm-hmm. Who is this uh, actor playing the fake teacher? Oh, this is the best. <laughs> 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 this character is out of his mind. That was a professional actress. Oh, I mean, there, there was way, one that got cut where he slapped her, her ass. On the way off the yeah, door. Yeah, I like that one. Well, that's a great thing about Ken is uh, never the same thing twice. Uh, he's, like, he's a constant improviser. Yeah, it makes it really easy to edit. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to not include the part with him eating the brain, you would find that you <laughs> you had options. I, I love that the character <laughs> had a rap composed for him. I like the jacket. <laughs> he just yeah. walks out. Chang. And we specifically wanted like a ghost face killer kind of kind of feel to building it. like <laughs> And that's our in-house rapper by the way. Yeah, Kustu? What is, what he calls himself a couple different things. Um Really? Uh yeah, we have an in-house rapper. He does all our rap songs. Oh, really? I thought it was yeah, Ludwig. KU no KU <laughs> KU makes a cameo in 107 at the end. He does the rap about um yeah, he does the yeah the uh, poopoo him poopoo in him poo-poo yeah. in his pants and poopoo in me heart. So Ku has a rap in this episode in 107 and in uh, 112. There's a rap as Donald walks into the dance class. That's Ku. All my boys and all my peeps. And then we reprise that in uh, in the finale at the um, kegger. That's the song that's playing over. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. I lo- this, oh, is this is a great joke. So this is worth talking about. That was yeah. really inspired. Like you know, the the inspired. That was really inspired, <laughs> says Dan Harmon <laughs> on the commentary track. In October, there was a free Tony Braxton. We can't talk about it for too long because we're talking over the whole episode. But it was just that was. We'll talk about this in other episodes. I'll also talk about the things I'm talking about and whether I should be talking about them. But <laughs> this is great the, commentary I, happening right now. It's the idea of gold. everybody marking Britta, everybody in the ensemble marking Britta as the humorless character, um, is was is another example of like we said at the top of this, taking things that you feel like like that if you're being noted on them, like if if people are saying like, well, you know. This Brita character, like some of the female uh, uh, focus group people are saying, like, well, I wouldn't want to go shoe shopping with her. I said, you get these weird comments, and then instead of overreacting to them, to embrace them, to make them part of your story. And because Gillian has this very self loathing, very like. Um, y- y- real energy, and to make her like the 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 member of the sitcom that, that the part of Gilligan's Island that just doesn't belong on Gilligan's Island is like takes her from from being looked at as as a bad thing to being looked at as the best thing about the show. Uh, she became my favorite character that when we decided to to go, yeah, that she's Charlie Brown. So. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Allison. <laughs> Where does Annie rate on the chart now? Yeah, she's yeah. second favorite right yeah. under this oh. guy jack black my favorite character i hope he comes back i hope they put him on mad men okay. yeah he would be so great the essay portion, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> no but I, love... um, I still get messages on twitter after this line where <laughs> i just like says, that face you made when he's miming squeezing your boobs yes anytime uh sexy things come out on the internet about me i get messages on twitter that say annie's pretty young we try not to sexualize her right yeah that was kind of a mislead. Well, it's not a mislead. We did try not to sexualize her. Or, or, well, we realized what's sexy about her is that she's forbidden fruit. So Love that. Got to love that. You know, it's interesting, Dan, is what you were talking about earlier with sort of Britta and, uh, and, the, and the Hawkeye thing. And that probably, you know, we were doing the commentary on these things out of order. This might be a better comment for earlier on the disc. But the thing that's very different about television this year is Twitter and the way that fans respond to episodes immediately. It's true. Um, and, you know, and this is a young group. Uh, uh, Dan's a very tech-savvy guy, and, you know, you can get 
a really visceral response to your characters and your show immediately. Immediately, yeah. yeah. You have to keep in mind you're getting response from Twitter people who might not represent America. The rest of America. But it's true, but... But you're but, but a lot you're of getting them love feedback. the show. You're I'll getting tell a you voice. That much. Yeah, you're getting a voice that uh, you know that is uh, is in St. Louis or right. uh, mm -hmm. you know. It, you're watching them react in real time too, and in a way unlike a dial that they're being told to turn in a research facility, um, which neither pretends to try to uh, simulate a living room nor succeeds in doing so. Um, with Twitter, you're with your friends, you're eating um, popcorn. Hold on, sorry, I'm getting a call from uh, actor and star Joel McHale. <laughs> hey, Joel, uh, we're, we're in the Put middle of our speaker. session right I'll now. I'll do my impression <laughs> of the other side. Uh, hello, we, I'm we, running late. We started without you. Where uh, are you? Well, the traffic... Uh, I'm working on my Joel impression so I can write better you for You trying him. to find where this place is? <laughs> It's right in the co. It's like right when you turn in. Yeah. Well, I'm. Where do I turn in? Um. You. There's a. There, it says six eight three eight, and it's got like a pretty. It, it's like it's an right by Ivy where the gate. address is. Yeah. Mm. Mm. There's nobody here. There's just a chair. Oh yeah. Just park your car and come on inside. Just, just leave, just it leave your car. I'm leaving the car here. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm leaving Good work. the car. Good. You Good damn work, dirty soldier. apes. He's got a little Charlton Heston to him. <laughs> he does. This is a great it's, scene. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the thing is, what we discovered like halfway through the season, I mean, not that you should have to discover this, but we just didn't think it would take this long. To, we didn't think it would happen so quickly that we would have this family. But these scenes where you have these guys just, just like, you know, they're little rascals having a meeting um, uh, when they're, te you know, in the Christmas episode when they're teaching Joel to fight stuff and scenes like this. It's like, wow, we really... We really got something here, and it's not because any of us are talented except the actors. It's like we just cast the right people, and you just stick Aww. them in a room together. And it, it's, it really humbles you uh, to realize that that's what TV is. Like, it's just a box with heads on it, and the heads are lovable hey or not. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Joel, Joel McHale. Joel McHale. Jim Rash is so great in this scene. Have we started again? I think so. Oh, geez. <laughs> is that really what happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crap. That's your intro. This is what happens Great. when you're late. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, take a second to talk about Jim Rash. I mean, Jim Rash was like a last minute casting on the pilot. Uh, we just couldn't find a Dean type that that, that hadn't been done before. Wasn't stereotypical. Are you going to do Ned Beatty? Are you going right. to do Gordon Jump from KRP? Are you going to you know what kind Animal of authority? House. I mean, what's the Louis De Palma? All these authority figures that you can either love or hate. And here, and then in comes Moby, um, and <laughs> yeah. with this energy that's just like, wow, this is a really modern but timeless archetype mm -hmm. of this guy. Dan, you his... said it when he, Jim Jim squeezes comedy where there is no comedy. Yeah, it's true. He, you're like he, he's a writer's actor that anything will be written, and he just makes it jump off the page yeah and he's he the adds, writer's he's... favorite i mean because yeah it's like you get a 10 percent boost on your paper airplane like it goes up you, you, it makes you look better as a writer and, and he had a really difficult job in the pilot where he's got to deliver the basically you know, the opening comedy speech of the show with a lot of pipe in it and uh um we cast him i think the day before two days before we cast shot. him on the set yeah. of the pilot mm -hmm. and uh wow uh, and then he just turned into this incredible character i mean you guys are okay too like, you look at this Thanks. scene. Uh, I think that shirt <laughs> is <laughs> the most terrific part yeah. of the scene. There he is. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Jack oh we've Black. already seen him once. Ah, dang it. Uh, this is the first time I've before. seen him. Anyone tell Buddy he was out? I guess we thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> my lord, my lady, you missed my apology song. My lord, my lady. I like that. Sweeves himself right in. It is a great concept, though, that I think you guys came up with for a big stunt like Jack is to have him try and usurp the group or get his way into the group. Right, and also to have his personality be big, you know, and weird in the way that Jack is. You know, I, I come from that school of the Sam Christensen school of that actors have essences. And in mm -hmm. other words, there's gas pedals they can stomp on with impunity. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other things we don't want to watch. Uh, Jeff Goldblum talk about fashion maybe but we do want to hear him talk about science I don't know that's really specific but mm -hmm. J J Jack Black is is he's he's lovable but crazy and so we thought you know what if you had this teddy bear join the group who's he's he's, he's gonna snap you know you don't know if he's gonna kill you or not 
And he did. Did you already talk about that he did this entire, the, all his scenes in one day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Great. <laughs> Never mind. By the end of the day, though, that was that was an incredible day. I mean, the guy did 11 pages in a day, and uh, just was, like Chevy. Yeah, we we're moving him around. <laughs> <laughs> sets. <laughs> And he, he was exhausted, but he was yeah. a he was a fucking trooper, Jack. I mean, that was he really. Shall we? You get used to. I've been friends with Jack since we did Heat Vision and Jack in '99, and you get used to having a famous friend that you can pull out like a carrot. But you forget because they're famous and they are a carrot. You also forget that the reason they got there is because of how fucking talented they are. Yeah. And 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 like then you're on set and it's like Jack, people are you know the script supervisor, the boom guy. Like people are like who have never seen Jack perform on set are like holy shit, this guy really hits his marks both physical and like totally. performance wise. Like Blew he's really away. interesting to Blew work with. And this is an example of like doing <laughs> ten pages or eleven pages in a day. I think we I'm shot this it. like. Seven or eight times, we couldn't get the pants thing right. Uh, those yeah. are Jack's real underwear. Those it's are true. the yeah. underwear One he wore. One time, the underwear came all the way off. Yeah. We had a... You saw yeah. it. Uh, you saw I, it, right? I did not yes. see it. I didn't see it. I was looking down. I was in character. <laughs> and I have to say, you know, he doesn't seem like that big of a guy, but he is... And I'm not joking. He's mostly muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He is He is. He was, well, dense. he was dead weight just then. He yeah. really yeah. made it... He really... He had his arms outspread. He's sort of a Christ figure in this scene. That's for the Joseph Campbell fans. And that was all sort of that was all Jack physical comedy stuff that just came up on set. I mean, yeah. the concept was that we're just going to drag him out of the room. Right. And there was a trail hit, you know, and pants no, coming down and the, and there was a trail of and I'm for pubic hair. Yeah. <laughs> because the table is not. I like how as, you looked at me like yeah, you like, know because well, you saw it. You right. you're right Look, there. You I had. I blew it away. I just. And it kind of drifted towards Gillian. You blew it at Gillian. <laughs> and this is a great scene. There's a there's a line at the end of this scene. I got in a huge, well, what I would call a huge fight with uh, Edwin Chung. If you're listening, I'm sorry, but uh, like like there's a line at the end. He goes, Edwin's he, at NBC. He, he goes, he goes, what's in it for me? And then Allison comes in and he does that scene. And I just wanted Jeff to like go hmm, and take a drink of his martini. Barked orders when the choppers came in. If he didn't, people died. Then there's this line where he goes, "I guess that's the that's what's the the upside or something," and I, and I and I just eat back and forth with the emails because it's like, yeah. "Well, no, we need that line because we and I'm, I keep going, or what? We won't know that's the upside." Like if you right. and I kept saying like if you if you write apple on an apple with magic marker it actually becomes less like an apple it Can doesn't make yeah. it clearer Something and in fact about... now you've got magic marker <laughs> all over your apple Can... and that's what that's what the network has to deal with sometimes at random things over something as stupid as one line. Can I just say something about Danny Pudi in this scene because it's a testament to his amazing acting and transformation in Abed that he was so sick when we shot oh, yeah, this scene right. he, was throwing he up. had a crazy fever yeah. Yeah. we were doing all this office stuff in one day and like as the day progressed he just just got more and more sick, like burning up, could barely stand up. And then you watch it, you'd never know. I feel like th these are some of the best Abed scenes in this episode. And you would never know that I have uh, such a paranoia of sick people. That's uh, true, and you were like, I did not want him to touch me or to breathe on me. I was like Howie Mandel. And yet the camaraderie no. between you both comes across. I got uh, dengue fever after this from him. <laughs> Listen up. We outnumbered this guy six to one. Annie, you... Chevy loves his mock turtlenecks. <laughs> There's nothing more he likes than his talking about what he has to wear. <laughs> Wait, you're saying he doesn't like them? He hates them. Too hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> Yeah. The most interesting thing, thing is, Chevy in his old age has developed a, a, a pause in between uh, his lines for comedic uh, uh, effect. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's um, it's a, like a, it's a it's, yeah. I mean, he's just venturing into sort of new, it's a pregnant, yeah, it's a pregnant pause, of, <laughs> but pregnant um, in the best way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you Chevy even that. looks pregnant. Not in a line. Chevy, I'm not kidding. in a line I'm searching kidding, way. Chevy, I love yeah. you. It's not in a line searching way. It's more of a, a, no, a, a comedic resonance. It's a line yes, owning absolutely. way. It's like yes. Robert Duvall. He's like yeah. he's he's he is the character during those pauses. Welcome to the group. Oh, yes! You will not regret this. Here comes the greatest reunion in TV history. Yes, which none of us were there for. None of us were there. Joe Russo worked with Owen on uh, Yumi and Dupree, so 
this was like like between Joe knowing Owen. I mean, I worked with Owen, but Joe wor really worked with Owen. So we were able to. They weren't shot at the same time. <laughs> like, the idea of doing this gag is like that we were just yeah, just able to scrape. Yeah, they shot two days apart. I think it's true. We were all yeah. like, oh, are we gonna get to be there when Owen was there? And I got in, and they were like, you're about an hour too late. He was in and out in like an hour. <laughs> he, no, he was here. Uh, uh, Pip timed it. Uh, he was out in 29 minutes. 29 <laughs> minutes. Came in, yeah. make him yeah. ready. And Joe tried to get him to do the tag the in the shot, Starburns role. And and, and he's like, listen, man, you gotta, like, you <laughs> called me in for a cameo, bro. Okay. <laughs> I can't. The, the way he trots off there, his last little look. So his Jack's exit was pieced together with Owen uh, on separate days. I, I love that, that too. That, that ending, it, oh, it. it was so great. I have to say that a lot of older people <laughs> that my mother-in-law knows who saw that were so they felt like, oh, they did one for us. Yeah, and yet you would think I was doing one for, like, the year 2050 to hear the panic about no, the like, joke. Nobody speaks Latin anymore, Dan. <laughs> we just, I was, the only moment in the entire season we whored ourselves out and did that rap one more time. We just yeah, felt like... Run. Which rap? The... The, uh, oh, the, oh, yeah, but no, I thought that's, I think it's funny. Oh, <laughs> like, wait a minute. Wait, I think to, we've seen another that Another shirt that Chevy loves. That looks yeah. like developing film. This has been Joel McHale, Allison Bickle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>